All right, I think we are live. I'd like to welcome everyone to our June artist demonstration for the Society of West Coast Artists. My name is Jim Stinger and I'm the president of the San Francisco chapter of the Society of West Coast Artists. And I encourage you to go to our website, societyofwest-coastartists.com. And there you'll see information about our society. And if you're not a member, this is where you go to become a member, to sign up. So um, we are, are very pleased today to have Yvette Head, who is our demo artist. And, and she has some very interesting painting techniques to show us in acrylic with abstract botanicals. And there's a lot of texture in her paintings. If any of you are familiar with her paintings, you'll know what I mean. And I also want to advertise the workshop she's going to be doing for us in September, on September 24th and September 25th. It's Saturday and Sunday, two days. And it will run from approximately 10 to three or four in the afternoon. So you get some good painting time in and you get some good instruction from Yvette. So I encourage you to look on our website for information about that, that workshop and to be able to sign up there. So without further ado, I think I'm going to turn it over to Yvette and let her introduce herself. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Hi, everybody. My name is Yvette Head, as Jim said. Yeah. And like you, I love to paint. And I'm really excited today to share with you my process and my techniques that I use to create my art. It's something that has evolved over the years, definitely, um, just through painting and painting, experimenting with different types of media. I've done everything from oil to watercolor to ink to collage, mixed media. I keep gravitating back to acrylic. And I use acrylic not in a traditional way. I don't use heavy body acrylic paint. I actually use fluid acrylic paint. And I use it like a watercolor or like an ink. But what's so attractive about it, which I'll show you one of my favorite colors, is golden, a fluid acrylic paint. And I like it because it's got a semi-opaque quality. It also has a transparent quality, which is really awesome for glazing and awesome for layering. And it's also awesome because I get to mix it with an array of um, acrylic mediums. For instance, this one, <laughs> things backwards. This one is a soft gel gloss medium. And, you know, Golden has so many, but I'm going to focus on the ones that I use. And they have different effects that I've played with that I like or don't like, or one exaggerate and so forth. But I can, again, mix it with my acrylic mediums. So let me just show you one of my paintings. And this is, it matches the other one behind me. This is one of my paintings. This is um, a, an abstract botanical. There we go. And it is one of my, um, one of my, how do say, my most common style. I'm attracted to botanical imagery. And I like, even a flower that is blooming, a flower that is withering, um, especially when they start to decay and fade and all those neat structural qualities that they have that I can highlight. And I'm gonna show you better when I change the camera view, but I have a lot of texture in my work and the texture is my foundation um, and I build from there. I also have a lot of line work. My line work varies from dark to light to fuzzy to strong. Line work is real important to me. I love the contrast that it gives. It's probably because my background is architectural design. That was my first career, which I'm still doing today. I'm balancing both um, as we speak right now. So <laughs> it is. this is a chance for me to really express myself in a different way and have no rules and so forth. So this is another painting real quick. I did a show at Viewpoints Gallery and I called it um, biophilia. I think a lot of us, when we were home during this past year, we wanted to make our house even more, you know, comfortable and pleasant as we were stuck there <laughs> and doing whatever we were doing. But one of the things that I started doing is, you know, doing houseplants and houseplants kind of give you that 
um, comfort feeling in your home. And so I painted a lot of paintings that were on based off house plants. And this one's a geranium. So you can kind of see it. It's, I play with the structures of the leaves. I love just, I love green, obviously. It's one of my favorite colors, but it's kind of my, my neutral color as well. Okay. So now I'm gonna go downwards. Okay, before we, before we do ahead. that, okay. um, maybe I would ask everyone to mute themselves while she's doing her demo, unless you have a question. And are you okay with questions while you're working? Or? I'm okay, yeah. Or would you rather I don't, they- I just, I'll just, I don't have to change anything. Rather no, you don't have to change anything. That's they totally can fine. talk directly to you. Yeah, so, that'd be fun. <laughs> so if you, have a, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, but then we ask that you mute yourself again, just so that the background noise is at a minimum. So I'm gonna switch cameras. Thank you. Okay. Okay, everything's like backwards and forwards. All right, so this is a painting that I wanna bring up close so you guys can see. This was a painting I did this past year and it highlights the texture and line work and the glazing and so forth that I love. And this painting was actually for an online um, art exhibit for an environmental awareness group. And I think it was more or less about kind of like a resilience with everything that was going on in our world. And I didn't want to do a depressing painting, but yet I wanted it to have some sort of mood, mood to it. So what I did is I called this the fire followers. So we had so many fires in California. And so I have like a, you know, burnt up tree, like a redwood over here, but yet I have this, you know, emerging California poppy that follows you know, the fires and emerges from the ashes and everything that's burnt. So I wanted that contrast, that pop of orange and light green. And I have some really interesting texture and layers of glazing that happens in some of these pockets that I'm definitely gonna hold on to this painting. I'm not selling this one. <laughs> it's gonna stay in my collection because I was really happy with how it turned out. And I think as an artist, you know, you find a favorite painting and you find, oh, I can copy it, I'll do it again. It never ever works for me, especially because I forget what color I used here and how I got there. Because this, for instance, in this color, this area here, I had probably burnt sienna, I had titanium white, probably, I'm not, I never say these right, but other glazing colors over that to give that effect. Because once it dries, it may be what I like or it may not be what I like. And I want to cover it, not cover it up, but layer it again. And you might see some of the line work that is lighter. So I have line work that is white. I have line work that is dark. And sometimes I do green. I have this green out here. There's a little bit of the tinted green there. And it's fun to play with this. I mean, I don't do color studies for my work. I just start and just go with it. It's kind of like when you draw with an ink pen, you can't erase it. You just keep going and just seeing what happens. And if it's really horrible, there's always just so. <laughs> so that's what I do. So what I'm gonna do today is show you the steps I go that I do to create my art. And my first step is my foundation, and that is my molding paste. And then I do my line work, and then I do my color. So, just real quick, inspiration-wise, you probably could guess I'm inspired by botanical imagery. <laughs> We're echoing. And um, I, my friend, a good friend of mine, she says, don't call your designs in your sketchbook doodles. But to me, that's what they are. But these are things that I draw just out of my head, just fun sketches, um, not really sketches. They're more like ink designs and they're very stylized. So I, I refer to this when I do a painting, but it's just also just kind of getting thoughts out of my head. Like there's things in here that maybe someday I'll do or use. And I've tried and maybe they didn't work. So it's all just random things. And if you notice, they are very structural designs. And again, I think it stems from my architectural background. So that's my sketchbook. Oh, and by the way, my company is called Autumn Lane Studios. I don't know if Jen said that, but <laughs> I, chose, I chose a company name, artistic name that because I definitely plan into going to textiles and different products as well as art. So I didn't want to call it Evex art or something like that. 
and that's just random stuff. Okay, so I'm going to put this away and here is a raw canvas. Just one I got a book and nothing's done to it. It's just plain. And I'm going to start with my first step and that is building my foundation, my texture. And I have a lot of different tubs of um, golden, you know, acrylic mediums and they're all sticking, you know, below my work table. And instead of picking them up, I label them all on the top so I can see what they are because I have different types of them. But this is a brand new jar of molding paste. And if you're an artist and you go into an art store, you know what it is like to be go to a candy store. And that's how I am. I mean, my family literally has to leave me there for an hour or two, <laughs> especially if it's not one of the main franchise ones. I just want to find all the different tools and mediums that are at regular blood stores or something. So this is a brand new jar of molding paste. And this is light molding paste. There are so many kinds, not so many, but they are very, they vary in their performance and the qualities that they have. I personally use mostly light molding paste. For one thing, it's lightweight on my canvas, but another thing, I love the clay-like and the absorbency it has. There's regular molding paste and coarse, and there's beaded and so forth. Some of them, um, the paint sits on it, where I want the paint to soak up. I want it to soak up into the canvas. But there's also other tricks I'll tell you about that too. So here is a brand new tub of molding paste. I don't know about you, but it's really exciting. So there it is. It's really fun. And I'm going to show you what I do to create my texture. I'll raise my canvas up so you guys can see it as I'm working on it. There, if you've been to any workshops before with molding paste, there's so many ways to use it. Again, this is how I do it. Um, I got this spatula at a dollar store or at Michael's at some, at some point, and I use it to scoop out my molding paste. So it's not yummy, it's like frosting. So I don't apply it very thick, I do it pretty thin. And there's gonna be quicker ways to do this. You don't have to work really fast, but honestly, this is just fun. Um, it's, I want to take my time and move it all around and you can kind of see. So I'm going to kind of work a little fast to show you what I do. So I'm just randomly kind of a somewhat of an even coat. Sometimes I leave the canvas texture below showing, but I don't want to go too thick. I'll show you what happens when you go thick, which is fun. But I randomly just cover the entire surface. And get it going. So this is also a process that's prepping my canvases that I have to let this dry overnight. So I will work on more than one piece of artwork at a time because of that reason. So I of course had a dried one to show you at the end here. So I'm gonna get this on real quick. And so it's got kind of see make it a light better. It's got some, you know, texture there, which you probably have seen things like this before. And if you notice, if I told you before, I don't use paint for my texture, I use the molding paste. So I'm gonna put that there for a second. There are lots of ways to create molding paste, I mean, texture. For me, I want it to be unrecognizable. I don't wanna use a stencil that, that distracts from my other work. That's just me, I've done that in the past. But there's, you can put a stencil down and lift it up and it makes beautiful, you know, things. There's a lot of artists that do it and it's gorgeous. But for me, I want it to resemble the things that I find when I go out on a nature walk. You know, that bark, the moss, the little rocks and pebbles, the, you know, the leaf that's decaying on the ground. I want it to be real organic. But although this is kind of fun, this is cardboard paper. And I just literally go over the canvas and kind of move it around. And you can kind of see some random marks that I press it when we raise it up. So you can kind of see some of the ridges and things like that. So I'll talk about why that's important. But then I also got a sea sponge. I'll press in there as well. The sea sponge I like because it gives me those little circles and crevices that are resemble the ground as well. And I also don't want to see the harsh lines of those cardboard ridges I did. I want to soften the edges. 
so that was that guy. I, I go through a lot of these and I have to um, wash them. But this is another one that's fun. I, I won't use it. I have to whisk really quick. I wet it down. It's just a basic sponge. And let me get it wet real quick. Okay. Should have soaked it before. Him. So I press it down again, being careful not to show. Let me see. There we go. Not just to outline those square corners, but again, it lifts up the molding paste and it gives that kind of distorts that texture on the bottom. Okay, so move it around. Then I'm not really crazy about some of the bumps and things that are going on. I want to smooth it out just a tad. I will use this is something I got at the paint store at the Home Depot, and it's um, they're real cheap, but I still clean it when I'm done. Again, being careful not to create a line, but I can always soften it later. I take it and I drag it just ever so lightly across the whole canvas, not to soften it too much, <coughs> but just to give it a little bit, not so rough in edges and too much, too many peaks, I guess is what I'm getting at. But that's okay because I'll tell you why. <laughs> but this is a finished piece here of the molding paste. And I usually, I can take longer, maybe less, whatever. But this again is light molding paste and it's just my first layer. Maybe just put it somewhere. I don't want it to touch anything. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> okay, so this is a finished piece. Thank you. The edges aren't done, so it should be fine. Here is a finished piece that is dried with molding paste on it. And I'm trying to get the lighting right so you can maybe see some of the crevices. So there's some textural, textured areas here. You're gonna see them better. Thank you. <laughs> so, a little bit. Oh, I gotta take a drink of water. Once we get the paint in it, you'll see it. Hmm. So this has been dried overnight. And once it dries, again, I mentioned there's some of those ridges and peaks that I'm not real crazy about. I take a light, I take a little sand, I sand it just really lightly, just to kind of smooth out some areas and dust it off. So then is another thing I talked about is that, <coughs> I always do this, okay. Is that the molding paste that I use, it soaks up the color which I love, but sometimes it gets a little too diluted and washed out. So there's another trick you could use. And that is again, that soft gel, the gloss or any other gel medium. It could be a matte medium, it could be gel. And I don't cover the entire canvas, although you can do that with a light coat. I just kind of dab it on here and there just sporadically because what it does, it kind of resists the paint on the, to the canvas. And it gives me some more effects that I like to highlight the texture. Another thing I do too is I think we've all heard of like dry brushing. I'll take, um, and again, it could be different colors, but I choose again, titanium white, because again, it's like a resist. And it, it highlights some of the, I just take a, a little brush, a dry brush, or if I wanna do more, I'll do like a spatula over the areas and just kind of highlight some of the ridges with the white titanium paint. Again, just here and there, not many places. So that's my first phase, my first step. My next step is my very favorite phase, and that is the line work. And it's also the messiest. I don't know. It is pretty messy. And but it's also the funnest part. Oh, God, you get get that? Yeah. Okay, because it's got goop on it. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's what I use to create my mind work. And I have experimented and I'm still trying different ways to translate that line work you saw in my sketchbook onto my canvas. And in the past, sometimes I would paint first and then do the line work. And then I decided I like to do the line work first and then paint. Maybe it's like my childhood, like when you get a new coloring book, you know, things like that. You want to color in the lines and have fun. So this is crazy as so you guys can see some of my stuff. Okay, so what I use is a detailer, like a squeeze bottle, 
to do my doodle, my line work. And I call it my goop because it's goopy. Um, it's a thicker this, this, I never say it right, viscosity than paint because what I add to this, I mix the fluid acrylic paint with, a, they call it the glass gel medium. There we go. This is a polymer medium. It's so it's thicker than the, some of the other, but it's also droopy like if you were doing the paintings that are popular that, um, would you just, you told me about it, the, the pouring mediums. It's like a pouring medium, but a little thicker. So you, I add that with the paint in these squeeze bottles. And these squeeze bottles, that Michael's used to carry them, then they just continue them. Hobby Lobby has some, which are cool. I don't like the one that Flick has. So again, and when I'm ever out in the craft store, I'm grabbing what I can find until I find another way to do my line work. If I use a paintbrush, it just, it's just clumpy and thick. And thick. I, don't, I don't like the control of it. I have more control with this. But again, it's temperamental because it gets clogged and that's where the messy part comes in. So when you buy these squeeze bottles, these detailers, you get these tips and there's different openings and so forth. And hopefully today, I won't have too much trouble, but I'm gonna grab one and stick it on here. And then I'm gonna practice with it. Okay, okay it's working. All right, so do you guys have any questions? Everybody doing okay? Hello, everybody. And <laughs> hello, everybody here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna sit down. Okay. And I'll raise the canvas up as I go. So I, I could refer to my sketchbook, um, but I'm really just going off by my head, which I do a lot anyway. But I want you to see how this works and it's really fun. So I look at my canvas because I just kind of think, okay, where do I want the middle to be or the ends and so forth? This one doesn't matter so much. Maybe I'll go like that. Okay, and I start with the middle. I'm gonna do a flower going to do one of my abstract botanicals. So I start in the middle and I already got holes and I'm going to do the center of my flower. And this scoop is a little thin. It's not real thick. You can kind of see, but oh, it's really thin. But I'm working kind of fast. But what I like about using this is because I, I like the fatness and goopiness of it. And then it can be thin if I go faster or if I stay in one area, it gets thicker. I like the organic and freehand look of it. And the bubbles don't mind me either. I'm into things that are imperfect. I, if you're someone who wants perfect drawings or perfect art, this isn't for you. <laughs> this is the time to play. <laughs> Did you want to come closer? No. You're good? Okay. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep building this as I talk to you guys. I'm also gonna have a finished piece as well. I like things to be sort of wonky and asymmetrical because I've drawn houses that have been too symmetrical. It's time to really change things up and I can really loosen up. But again, these are flowers that are mostly, mostly do work. Oh, my daughter chimed in. I see Rochelle. <laughs> I, um, I heard a click. And these are mostly done looking straight down at my work. It's kind of like a plan view. I do do some that are, of course, sideways as well, like you saw in the fire flowers. Um, it just depends on the composition. But for today, I want to do one that is very common of my style. And I'm just dragging it around and just playing with it. So I'm going to do a little bit more to kind of show you what I do. And so when I'm done with this tip, here, pull it up. It's kind of glossy and jelly and it's very wet. And again, I have to let it dry before I can paint. But over through experimenting, I um, thought, well, how can I change the color of my line work? And just to kind of just give more interest to my paintings and things. And you probably saw on my other work, I had some white, I think I should talk about it, some white lines as well. And does that work? Oh. The white clogs up so easily. Okay, so I like to use white um, line work in some areas like, you know, if you're looking at the garden and you see flowers filtering through, I also goop up 
either leaves or just some other shapes that are kind of coming through the background and they became kind of like ghost figures or ghosts, like not really ghosts, but kind of shadows and things. But what's fun about them is that that can change up the contrast with what I fill in or drape over it, which I'll show with my paint. I think I'm going kind of fast. I'm already ready for my paint. I'm gonna keep working. Should I, I'm, I'm just gonna keep drawing this. Does that sound good? Okay. <laughs> Okay. And what happened, what I use, um, just so you know, and I'll be doing a workshop and talk, we'll figure this all out together. But when this clogs up, I have several gizmos and gadgets that I use. I think this is from a turkey thing. And it's just, as, it's something that I can put inside here when that gets clogged up. And then when my tip gets clogged up, I just, because I sew once in a while, <laughs> I just have a pen, the pen that I use, I got lost it, that, and I have it in a cork so I can don't hurt myself. I use it because it's real thin that can go inside the tips and they get clogged up and clear it out. So just to kind of clear it up. Because I, sometimes when you see the detailers, they come with a stick pin on top of it. I'm, I'm just, there's no harm. It's just what I like to use that helps clean it out. And that's the only thing that slows me down because you get in the middle of an idea and then it clogs and stops and you're like, oh, or it explodes. <laughs> but it's all the fun part of it. So I'm going to continue working on this a little bit more. And then on the one that you did that was the plants you showed us earlier. Yes. Would you like sketch that on the canvas or do you do freehand like you do this? I sometimes transfer it onto a canvas if it's got a kind of a complicated idea, not, whereas not so complicated, but where I definitely want things to go. But I do, what I do is I actually sketch it on the, the life size of the kind of paper and scratch paper. And I'll do it like if that, that size there, I actually had the paper that size and started drawing on it. So I knew where things were gonna go, but not the entire composition, but some of it I did. So I made sure that I got everything on there. So sometimes I do transfer it um, because for that, that show, I had a lot of artwork that are a lot of plants that were specific that weren't my, just my style, which was fun. I wanted to, you know, I'm always looking for a new project that to push me, but I really had fun. Let me show you on here that um, the, just the texture of the terracotta and things like that. So like some of this work here, I just, I played, actually, I looked at something and this was all done by Green Hat. So I didn't trace anything or not, so of course I didn't trace it, but I traced my work onto some of the areas to make sure I got it. But, um, but a lot of it was just taking an inspiration and, and then just, and you doing it by Green Hat. I, I like it to be Green Hat. I don't want it to look real. I want to distort it somehow. So. And um, again, I, I, I like, um, you know, certain flowers that are starting to wilt and um, they just kind of take on this, I don't know, the, the holes and the cracks and everything in it that are fun to do, let's see. And also too, um, it's just me, I like a strong center point into my camp, into my paint, my flowers. I want to draw you into it. These are like, Maybe it's an, um, a conceptual idea, but I feel that these are a powerful flower. I want to, I mean, a powerful subject where it's not just so, how do I say the word? I, um, I want it to be, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of, kind of a, it's just a strong kind of, strong kind of look. I don't want it to look wilted and so forth. And that sometimes has to play with um, how I paint it too. So I'll do, these are just like twigs, um, things that are um, branches and things and maybe little blossoms. Um, sometimes I'll do like a little cluster of them. And this goop is really thin, that's why I'm going really fast. And I'm barely squeezing it as you can tell, maybe. <laughs> so, very organic, but I've also done, you know, more like daisy type flowers too, which are real fun with the long 
stones, but I'm imagining all the different colors of the leaves, the green leaves that I'll do. And we do some more white. It's not clogged. And usually I do the white after <laughs> this is done. I usually don't, I don't know, you can have them bleed into each other, these different colors, I mean, different line work, but I, maybe that's a new thing I should do to start letting them bleed into each other, but usually you have them separate. So I'm going to, how are we doing on timing? Should I, I'm, I'm generally really quick on it. Um, okay. <laughs> I did have a question. Yeah. It looks like you don't do anything on the edges until you're done. Is that basically right? On the edge of the canvas? Yeah, the edge of the canvas. Um, I have tried. Sometimes I'll do like little designs on it. Um, I usually just paint it solid at the end. And I'm also trying to do um, some uh, of the floating frames around them. Okay. Yeah. But I usually just, yeah, I don't know. I like them just solid. Okay, another thing that I do is I'm trying to wait for it to dry a little bit. I sometimes, um, I actually want one of these. That would be a good illustration. Oh, it's harder to see on here. But sometimes the line, as you can see, the line work is solid and, um, and not real transparent. Here it is. When it's at a certain, um, time of when it's drying, I will come with a paper towel and I will just kind of blot over it. And so it lifts some of the line work and at least, you know, if you get it just right, <laughs> you get just the outline of the line work of the goop that I have. And it, it, lifts, it, it lifts some of that center part and I can put paint in there or just have that nice contrast as well. So it's not just consistently solid. I really actually like that a lot. It's something new that I've been trying to do. And I, I can, since I have time, I'll just tell you a story. I mean, we all have happy accidents. It wasn't happy at first, but I finished a painting a little bigger than this. And I literally, by accident, didn't hit the side and hit this. And it rolled over my entire canvas, the tube of paint. So I ran out of the garage, that's where my studio is. And I went, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I just was being dramatic, but I'm like, I can't believe I did that. So I came back and I went, Oh my God, that's what I've been trying to do for the past, you know, year. So it, again, it lifted up some of the goop just perfectly. I don't know why it's near it, but my bottle was really pretty too. It had a really pretty design. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, how do I get to do that now? <laughs> so, but it was a really, it was eye-opening for me because it is how I move forward with my work. So that was a happy accident. I'm going to try and do a little bit of it now. It's a little wet, but I want to show you that effect that I like of lifting some of this um, gel medium off. So it's ever so gently. This is just paper towel, the cheap ones from Costco or whatever. You mostly just use black and white on your, um, your part of it. I usually do green, a lot of different, like a dark types of green. This is a little darker. It's supposed to be, I had um, some greens in here but it's real dark. And that's one thing that this does. It'll usually lighten it up. And you can see that green, like when it's dry right now, this one is a lot darker. I was trying to get olive green, but it's a little dark, I can see. But, um, but no, I've done like um, some pretty blues and things like that too. Okay. Yeah, but you can change anything, any color. I've done a painting where it was all white lines and it, I don't know, it didn't really do much for me. It looked like glue. Mm -hmm. So these are fun. I don't, sometimes I'm like, can I keep these for something in <laughs> a collage? So I'm gonna lift this up so you guys can see, hopefully. Do you see how it's somewhat transparent now and that I took some of that goop off compared to what's around it? I'll do it one more time. But again, it's, it's that delicate time frame to do it in before it um, dries completely. And I, yeah, it's 
just gonna press it a little bit more. Sometimes when I do it a couple times, it doesn't spooge or burp or whatever. It comes out a little softer and I can press even harder. There, now you can see. To me, this is really pretty. So now you can see more green. See, it's actually a green color, an olive green. And I think it gets lost when the goop is real solid like that, which is still fine too. And I sometimes can dry brush over those dark lines when it dries to change it up too. So to me, this is like an aha moment and I really, really, really dig this part. So, but again, I go through a lot of paper towels. <laughs> and I also do it with my white too. And it's really wet right now, sorry. Um, oh yeah, no, the white lines. I was trying to look at when I came, yeah, to show you. So I can get it right. This, this area here is some white goop and you can see how I painted inside the lines. I kind of lift up some of the goop and then I also glazed around it. And then there's some lines that I dry brushed over that were dark in this area here. It's a really yummy texture area that has some more of a gray texture in it. And then again, some more of the white lines that I add the glazing inside of it too. And this is obviously lighter here too. So. All right. Is that my head in the way? I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think that I'm going to start with my other painting, which is not a big deal, we don't have to break for it, because, but I will come back to this and do some pressing on to kind of show you some more, some more things on that. I'm going to lay him down over here. Okay, before I do that, I'm gonna show you this, where to go. Just like my, um, my goop that I use my, for my line work, I mix with fluid acrylic paint and I mix the gel medium gloss and there's also like satin versions as well. I also create my palette, my colors of glazing with another gel acrylic medium called, um, this is a, it's a glass glazing liquid. There's also satin as well. And this is, again, my golden. Golden's my go-to. I like the quality um, and they're just good performing products for sure. And this is, I'll show you all my colors in a second, but this is one way that I can, because when I create my palette of colors, I just don't take you know, one color and put it on a palette. I'm already mixing them up. Um, I, I, I mute my colors. I don't always do vivid colors, but I have them canvases like that where I do real vibrant blues and greens and teals and oranges and reds, um, which is really fun. But on this one, I'm doing real organic -y kind of, you know, earthy colors. And so I mute them down a bit. So that's kind of um, my, my thoughts. So each of these, like for instance, this is a really pretty lime green. And that's definitely with either some sap green and some a vivid yellow. And I have lots of different greens. So this is more of a olive green, more of a blue teal. And this is like a pure sap green, which is a lot. So I'm gonna introduce some of the terracotta and, and uh, mauve colors as well. But this little canvas here is got the molding paste on it as well. So it mimics the surface I'm working on. Because I noticed when I would paint some of these samples as I'm creating the color onto paper, it just, it just gets washed out and it's ugly. But you can also see some of the fun things I discovered with especially chrome green is chrominian oxide green. When I mix it with other oxide colors, the, I kind of push my pigment with too much water that some of it breaks down onto the canvas in different colors. Um, and it's really, really interesting to me. 
So did you also show Yeah, I forget. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah. So for you guys here, <laughs> so this is just a little um, canvas here. I had for some art classes or something. I'm like, I gotta use these up. So this is a palette, and this is kind of neat. Usually it gets a little messier, but especially when I'm working in oranges and different things like that, I want to make sure that I get kind of the color that I'm going for. Like this one you see here is a definite very bright yellow one that I usually don't always do, but I did a series of four of them. So they all were really bright colors. I did a blue one, a purple, and an orange one, and then the yellow. So it was a fun time to play with color. Okay, so I'm gonna show you kind of, let's see. Um, let me get the painting out here. Cause I might do the break quicker, just to be thin, it's not boring. But this is the canvas <clears throat> that I'm gonna paint on today. And I started it out just a tad, just to kind of get my thoughts of how I want to kind of finish it off. But I also wanted to get some layers down because I'm going to go over these layers. Because my first round of filling things in is kind of flat and just um, not as vivid. But some of the green areas, I'm going to go over that with maybe a yellow or maybe even a really diluted orange or so forth, just to kind of make it pop in different ways. And then I also have these areas here, I'll show you guys too, that are white line work. And I already got kind of a, a start on that, but I'm gonna go over that and you're gonna just, I don't know, to me, I get really excited. I'm gonna do some really dark, intense color over that and it's gonna resist from those areas. So this is what I'm gonna work on. So one of my flowers today. So I think, and how long yeah. do one question. Oh, no, go ahead. How long would you need to let the out the lines all dry before you start on this part? Um, at least a good part of the day. You don't have to really do it overnight, but sometimes I do overnight. Um, but at least a good part of the day to do it. Um, as because I I just want to make sure unless it's hot and take it outside to dry, you can do that too. But like for that one, I'm gonna come back and I'll probably block some more. This one I. I didn't allow a whole lot of some of the goop off, you know, lifting it off, but um, it, because I was in the garage and it was hot, so it dried really fast. <laughs> That's another thing, either it's cold or it's hot, and then the, my uh, line work medium will be real runny or really thick, so it all depends. So also too, because like when you're um, working with fluid paint, this area here that I did, I'm not gonna come right back and go around it unless I want it to bleed into it. So then I've got to keep moving around the canvas to kind of come back and also remember like, what did I want to do here? <laughs> and so forth. So it's very fluid with it and everything. So I'm moving all over the, the work. Yeah. So does anyone have any questions? Oh yeah. Have you ever tried used a dryer to try to dry an area you want to work in that's still wet? <laughs> you could. I I I have done that, but my dryer died. And I forgot to get another one out there. <laughs> but yes, definitely a dryer for sure. Um, especially that's what I'm thinking in the workshop. I'm trying to visualize how we can speed some processes up to this the, the, of drying and everything. So it's two days we can definitely get the molding paste done. But the goop, I think we're going to have to play with that with the dryer without any. Maybe we can make it move too. I think the line will move with the blow dryer. But yeah, definitely that helps. Um, so what I'm going to do um, when we take a quick break is I'm going to as assemble all my palette. This is my glazing medium and my fluid acrylic paint. And my basic palette is what I start from. And then I'll talk about how I work from that with more water. <laughs> So, so you want like 10 minutes? Max, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just 10 more minutes. Um, 10 minutes, we'll take a quick break and I'll be back. Just gonna set everything up. I got you. Do you need to have to be able to go to No. <laughs>
I've lost sound. It's like the heavens open and the yeah. I think uh, Sharon, you put you pressed mute on um, Mom's main page. Still no sound. I've also lost the um, the main screen. Can anybody hear that? Okay. There we go. Yeah, better. Okay. <laughs> Let's start again. <laughs> Too bad you guys have to take notes. I'm going to start over. Okay. <laughs> so what I have in front of me are my main palette colors. And I am not going to use this entire tub of green on one painting. This painting lasts me um, for several paintings. This paint lasts me for several paintings. I use a lot of different tubs that I recycle. This is sour cream, you name it, different things that I can seal, put a cover on and seal it up. Um, and again, I store these, the, all the paint in um, the refrigerator because if, in the hot summer, it dries up really fast. So I told a story, which you guys didn't hear, but my story is that <laughs> I hogged up the refrigerator in the garage and it hogs up space for my husband's beer. So I have another, I have my own refrigerator, which is like those dorm size refrigerators now that I'm gonna be hooking up into my studio space. But anyhow, each of these containers has a fair amount of paint in it and a fair amount of this glazing medium, which I put some in there. <coughs> it's also lots of water. So I just use my squirt bottle and squirt some water in it. I want it to be really fluid, really runny. And again, I'm probably stretching the pigment more than I need to, but I kind of, that's the effects that I like, and I'll show you that. So the glazing medium keeps it lasting longer. <coughs> Anyhow, so I have, we kind of show you the colors I have, why I chose these. I have, a really olive color of green. It's kind of dark and moody. And then I have some really nice vibrant greens. And it, believe me, each of these are different as you can kind of see from my example here. Some have more blue. I wanted like, I like the teal with it. I have a couple teals going on. And I have a vibrant green. And then I have some more earthy greens and a real lime green, which I love to pop, especially with the purple lavender. And then I have these really muted and yellows. <clears throat> and I lost my voice. Mm. And I think I said I don't use all these paint, all these, all this paint for one painting. And what it is is that it's my basic core of colors. And then these wells that I have, I should have brought more. But what I do is I take my paintbrush and all I need is a little bit on my paintbrush and I'll put it in the well. And this paint, is, you know, right here is up quite a bit. Again, I'll take some more water and I'll put it in there as well. But let's say I like this color a lot and I want to make a tint of it. I just take some more of the paint, my paintbrush in the well, and I clean it off. And I'm going to, I have a lot of, I use a lot of tints. So this is titanium white and it's mixed with, again, the glazing medium and some water. And the reason why I have these in these containers this size is because 
again, this is from um, my brother-in-law, has a bunch of these containers. They, I keep it stored longer and I can, it's already mixed and I can grab it when I need it because I go through a lot of it. So again, I put it in my well with the grain and now I have just a little bit of a tint of that grain. And maybe it's too tinted. I don't know, it's just, I kind of go with it. How I feel. <clears throat> I also use um, Titan Buff as well, which is more of a beige off-white, depending on the look I wanna do or how I wanna change the tint of the mushroom color. Okay, so I'm gonna start my painting. And this is the time if you guys wanna ask questions as well, because I'll probably get kind of quiet, but I'm just kind of randomly thinking like what I wanna do. And usually in my flowers, I like to make them darker. <clears throat> But again, remember that this is my first coat of paint. So some of it's kind of flat looking. Once I start glazing over it, it's gonna be a little bit more vivid. So I'm gonna work in the center a little bit. And if you can kind of tell my paintbrushes that I use are well, well used and pretty, dist pretty destroyed. <laughs> but these are just watercolor brushes. I don't use acrylic brushes. I use watercolor because this is a water media and I love the way it soaks the, the, um, the glazing medium up. And I learned from another artist um, to clean my acrylic out of these brushes. I use Murphy's oil soap. I don't know if you guys have heard that with water and it brings it back to life. But my favorite paintbrush is the one that I barely has any bristles on it. I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty destroyed, but it works good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. And my center, I want to do a moody kind of color, but I'm going to keep it pretty diluted with water. So it, you can paint, you know, fluid, fluid, fluid acrylic paint, you could, you know, just do it really solid if you want. But to me, I like when it gets really diluted like that. I love how it highlights my texture, that transparent look. So that's what I'm, how I'm going to start. So I'm gonna put some water on here right now. Honestly, that could be enough paint right there, which I'm gonna start with. And I have, I should zoom in. You see those little purple um, shapes that um, a diluted purple paint over the white line work? I'm gonna go right over it with this paint. And I stay inside the lines, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Again, I try to push it and go away. I don't know. This is a year that I got to branch out, right? But I just keep adding more water. So what I do, I think you can see me, yeah, you can see me going to the, my water here. <coughs> I'm adding more water. So why it's wet, like with watercolor, I, if I think of it, I'll clean my brush and sometimes I don't. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this tinted green here and go over here because it starts to move around and maybe that's too much. Already what's gonna happen when before this we're done here, you will see the textural effects that it does. And all I did was add some wet white glazing paint over the green that was diluted. It's how the texture is really starting to pop out. I'm hoping you guys can see that. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush that's all beat up, but I wanna to get to do some of the little areas around here, the petals that support the center of my painting of my flower. <clears throat> so I just meet, meet, everybody's an artist here. You guys know what, how you wanna do your um, composition or how you do your colors, but I, I like to put some of the same colors that are in my center of my flower off to these little guys off to the side. And again, if they don't pop right now, I can always go over it some more later. I'm gonna leave that area alone for now because I personally don't want it to bleed into other colors I'm gonna bring next to it, especially if it's something really different. I don't wanna have a bunch of mud everywhere. So I'm gonna turn my canvas around and work in this area. 
And this was an area I talked about before that I have all the white line work and I already have some glazing, like really diluted watered down paint of some colors. Oops. I am going to use one of my bigger brushes and I'm gonna use this, um, it's kind of like a, it's like a teal kind of color. And it's really, here's some finishes too. It's really, really pretty. And I already have it in my well. And also too, because I mix several colors in each of these wells, if you start to see the paint separate, you gotta take the paintbrush and kind of, you know, mix it up again and bring everything all back to life again. It's good and bad, it's not a bad thing, but. Okay, so actually, let me get some water. So I'm just gonna start to take really a lot of water in this area. I took a watercolor class with Jim um, years ago. It was a lot of fun. And I honestly thought I wouldn't, I didn't know how well I do with it, but I actually fell in love with watercolor. And I, it really changed how I do my work here. <clears throat> that looks like a hair. Anyway, whatever. But I love lots of water. And you don't need a lot of pigment, of um, glazing medium, but it, um, it's just fun to watch it move around into the texture. And I think um, starting out really thin, you can kind of see where you want to come back with it. Sometimes I go over and such. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what's happening there. And this is just that one blue glazing color that I have. And like with any water meteor, you, you can make it thicker down here. And this is much water to thin out. But I'm gonna come back with a color that I think I have it here. Yeah, this is, um, you know, when you mix um, black with yellow, you get a really cool green. Again, I learned that in Nick Bailey's class. Um, <laughs> when we did, did the complementary colors, it, I was, again, just like, this is so beautiful. I didn't know I could do that. So anyhow, it's one of my staples. So I like to bring it in and just blend it in when it's with another, with that blue. And this is why I can't really recreate a painting because I don't remember how I get some of these effects. And I always like to add a little bit more white just to see what happens again over. This shows a lot of layers. So you were using tints and shades. Yes, tints and shades, that. remember that, yeah. I always say it wrong though, like hues and yeah. values, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All that color language. Yes. The color language. I know before I did this, I was like, oh, I got to get back into the lingo. What do you, how do I properly say that word? <laughs> so, um, so right now I'm going to let that area dry. And because um, I can come back to it later. So I'm going to work over. Let's see. I'm still going to work with some of my greens right now. Um, I usually start with my greens because to me, my greens are my neutrals and then I come in with my pops of color, like my oranges and my lavender. So, because these are kind of like my petals and such. This, this color here was um, the chrome, chrome, chromanian green and oxide green. And it didn't quite separate the way I like it to. So what I'm gonna do in my light well, my painting well, I wanna say light well. It's my architectural part of it, I guess. I'm going to get some of that green mixture, put it in my palette, and I'm going to grab some burnt sienna, which is right here. So this is the burnt sienna. I'm going to um, just take a tiny bit of it and put it in with that green in the palette. So I don't need like a whole tub of it. I just want a little bit of it. And I end up not, <laughs> I don't always use the cap with the lid on it and squeeze it in there because I don't want that much paint. I just actually just take a tiny bit of the lid. I only need a little bit. That's probably too much. <coughs> and again, it makes a nice kind of a earthy chromium green. 
and it might be too muddy. So I'll add some more green. What I want to show you guys is that it's, hopefully it performs that way. And I'm going to do again. I'll just do it this one here. Again, this is the chromium green with the burnt sienna. And it makes it muddy, kind of green. And again, the paint looks very different when it's wet and after it dries. It's going to look a lot different. But what I love about the burnt sienna, which I discovered on accident, is that it separates from the green and it makes, and it goes into these nooks and crannies in my texture. And it's very organic looking and earth looking. At art shows, people are, they come up and ask if they can touch my work. And I, of course, it's, you know, it's acrylic, it's okay. But it looks like stone or something like that. And um, they're kind of surprised. So it's, it's really fun. Okay. So the drawing that you did with paint initially kind of formed wells around the different areas. So you don't need to worry too much about painting in one area and then not painting in the next area because it's still wet in that first area, the two might mingle. It looks like the, the paints or the various sections aren't going to mingle. I'm glad you said that because I was going to point that out. It's That's one thing that's nice about it, but at the same time, some of them that I, that I pressed and dab maybe kind of flat and so the paint may move. Oh, yeah. yeah. um, so, but um, but normally you don't have to, which is nice. But I, I wanted to get rid of too much of that puppy paint kind of look. I wanted to, you know, this is fine art. It yeah. isn't, you know, a craft kind of thing. Yes. So I wanted to get away with too much of that raised area. Yeah. Um, but it does help for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do this pretty yellow. This is... Um, Golden came out with a new kind of line of colors. This is um, it's like a tinted green. It's Titan Green Pale. And it's already tinted, which kind of seems silly. We could just tint it ourselves with white. But I've been using it a lot to just quickly add to other colors, even the peaches. It kind of, you know, balances it out, not too bright of an orange, because I wanted this to be very earthy. Um, but I did, I used a lot of that with this. And then some of the bright, I think it was just this yellow, one of the, this is a primary yellow and some white. It was kind of interesting. It was very vivid. And I like the way this one pops next to my lavenders. But um, honestly, there's no rhyme or reason to doing this. Although sometimes I, in these smaller paintings, I don't want to have too much, too many colors. That's just me. It gets to, I want to have something that kind of is consistent. And some of the outlines of my petals um, and leaves, I, I'll come back later to do the paint it because it's, um, I don't want it to touch. Mm. And also that's probably an area that I'm gonna do lavender to make this yellow even pop more. And as you can see, I really just use a lot of water. Play this into the lavender. So this lavender, I um, I could tell you how I get some of these colors. Um, it is with rotable. Um, there's so many colors that, that uh, Golden makes, and, and what's neat about them is if you looked at the bottles, they do this test strip over it, and it shows you the transparent qualities of it. So obviously when I add titanium white, there's also zinc white, and the zinc white is the, and Golden is their transparent kind of white. So I'll do that later on, but usually my bottom colors are more of the opaque colors. But even still, I mix these up with the others to um, create my base colors too. So hmm, I think it works not too, or it's dry. It's 
it's kind of therapeutic just to kind of play around and see what happens. But I, I try to be, to not make it too thick, let's see. Go back over right here. Because if it's too thick of paint, the texture doesn't show out. That's why I use the water that I use so much because I want it to not fill in all those nooks and crannies or things like that too. So that's why it's watered down mostly. Because I can always go over it. But the more paint I go over it, the more texture is lost too. So there's kind of a fine line between it. And as you can see, this already bled over here. <laughs> This um, area here bled in with this area up there. Oh my, everything's backwards. Okay, there we go. Yeah, but it's okay. That's what with this. I like things imperfect. As you can see, I'm not really like stressing out over too much. Um, and then that's what I like about it is um, it's fun that way. Okay, I want to do some more background, but let me do so. I'm just going to do some more yellow. Sometimes on my recent flowers, I'll start with a dark center, more of a um, dramatic center, and then I'll do really faded petals that kind of surround it. So that it has this transition of dark and then light and then dark again. It's just something I've been playing with lately. <clears throat> but sometimes I don't get it very light. So this one I want to do really, really light. And I am going to do. This one. It's nice having this reference because I don't always do this. <laughs> so I'm going to do this guy. And I think that's him. Nope, I think I mixed him up. I think it's this guy. So it's a little bit of a teal blue, but not as much as that other one I did in the background. And I'm just going to make another tint of it. I just do my paint, I have brush in there. Not no, too complicated. Grab a little bit of paint and mix it up. So, I mean, you get two different colors that are on here, but they're similar. It's really a lot bluer than I thought I'd do. So maybe I'll pick them over here. I like to create areas that I like this section here is broken up by this line. And then I've got this section here, like we were talking about sections. So when the painting is like three quarters done, I'll see that I kind of created a lot of white shapes here. So then I'm probably going to do a dark shape here. Uh, maybe not, maybe just a complementary color. And I don't know why I make it perfect, but I kind of like to fill it in to the line because I don't want to distract from the white. Sometimes, like my husband has said, oh, shoot, I left this. Darn it. Um, why don't I paint some areas just white? And um, I think, and I've done that sometimes, but the plain white on here just looks lost because of the texture, and I want to bring out the texture. So that's why I've been doing tints. So the tints will bring out the texture instead. Like this, I think I want to make this entire petal still with the green colors. Um, I did not put them off. Normally, what I do is um, I have every single one of these in here, and I realized I forgot to grab some more of these on the way out the door. So, but I'm just gonna. This is not something I want. This guy. This is more of a light green. You go in this area. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know, like a collage of greens and colors on here. The petals, they're not all the same. Each section is a little bit different. And because I just don't want that to be the only area that has that bright green, I'll look and, and just see where else I want to bring it. I guess I don't like to have things 
right next to each other too, so I'll move it around. But I see these cracks and crevices here, so when it dries, I'll come back and add some colors in there. But for now, I'm just gonna keep the one green. I know I just said I was going to do more lavender, so let me, um, I think because the areas I want to do it, I've got wet paint. <laughs> Another thing too in my wells, I try to have just some plain white on here so I don't have to keep the white in there. And I dilute it with more water so it's watered down. So I'm just gonna grab it to work into this to make it more of a tent. And So it seems like the interest in your paintings is created not so much with value changes, but with color changes. Would yes. you say that's Yes, correct? thank you for saying that, yes. Yeah, I'm thinking of how to do that. It's each of these sections is an opportunity to just experiment and to see if these greens or these purples and stuff work, work. but it's um, very much about color. Yeah. And um, at the same token, um, you know, highlighting the texture, or bringing in other color and such. But I have a lot of fun creating all these colors here, and um, and then once I get them in here, they get they transform even further. So it's um, it's really cool, and I'll try. It's just um, again, it's just kind of like just trying different things. Like that's why I kind of bring different ones. And I try to steer away from the blacks. I like some of the blacks, mm -hmm. but I use um, the carbon black, which is, I think it's part of the bone black, which is more of a transparent black. So it's kind of a brownish black and it's not so intense as the... So, so if you yeah. want to create a focal point in your painting, mm -hmm. you can easily do that with just a big value change. Yes, a big value change, definitely. Yeah. And um, a lot of my paintings are very harmony, harmonious. Yeah. So I do try to do that to bring more contrast yeah. in areas. Yeah. So, um, and that's, I didn't want to get real far in this painting because of the layering, but like, you know, I wanted to make some stuff to dry so that you can see how I go over it. But it's just a work, that's why I work on a couple of different at a time because I have to wait for it to dry and I want to um, shift the value up in the, the vivid yeah. brightness of it. So right now it's the pretty similar colors moving around the work. And, um, and then I just think of some of the, and I try to break up the petals into different segments for that reason. In the past, sometimes this would be one solid shape and it was just one big color and I had to to break it down to others. So. Have you ever used uh, Payne's Gray uh, as an alternative to black? Because it has such a blue. And if you guys like to go take nature walks, um, I have like a collection of, of acorns and, and rocks and leaves and things like that. And those, those earthy colors are really attractive to me. Um, and um, so that's what I kind of mimic. So that's why you don't see a lot of real bright colors, but. It's a very muted palette. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, but, but it works. <laughs> Thank you. I know some of the, why don't you use red? I'm like, <laughs> I just, I just, and personally, I don't dress in red, so I don't know why I think red. It's just me. But I have done like some of the really vivid lavender colors or uh, lilac colors and things on some other paints. I didn't bring those with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I did like a rainbow kind of a, 
I won at the forest scene mm -hmm. and it was really fun. Mm -hmm. It was very colorful. It was something that took me out of my comfort zone. And this color is really intense. It's kind of a raw sienna and a little bit of the Naples yellow and I think some raw umber and actually some purple to even mute it down more. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it, it, it just kind of makes your eye travel a little bit more around it and it just break, it just makes the greens pop a little bit more too. But I don't always use a lot of it, but it is, it isn't, I like it because it's warm. And um, it feels good next to the other greens and such. And my oranges that I use are very, um, I liked how it turns out. It doesn't look like that now in the paint, as you can tell this area here. Can you see that okay on there? Do you need to move it up? Okay. But see how it's kind of just muddy looking, but when it dries, it's really kind of, it's really rich. Since this is dry, I need to put a little bit of a lime green in here. It looks really bright on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit brighter than what I see, but that's good. Okay. Um, so this area, this guy over this, I keep calling guys, I'm just weird. But this petal, this green leaf here, I should say, is just one coat and it has um, the chrome green. But see here I added some of the burnt sienna and it really muted it down. So I'll just go with it. I'm gonna layer up something over this guy, over this green here. And I'll probably do this that, which is this one here. The sap green, which I can find it for you, is my favorite color. And it's pretty transparent. There. It is very, very light. And it's great for just um, making some areas pop. So you don't have to do the whole leaf, a whole, a whole, you know, leaf here, I guess I'll call it a leaf. But it just breaks up the shape so it's not just boring in one color. And also too, there is some little divots and things in here that I'm focusing on, these little wells that I wanna put more of the glaze in there. So highlight and enhance that texture even more. We'll come back. And also too, which I didn't bring, Golden makes um, metallic paint. They have these um, bronzes and silvers and stainless steel and iridescence. And sometimes I'll do those um, silvers and golds and things like that. And I just do a little bit because it's very concentrated, but I'll put them in the cracks and it becomes very, looks like rocks and things. But it's really, it's another way to enhance the texture. And I was thinking of bringing it, but it's just, it's like the last thing I do. Okay, and this area too has some crack. I wanna bring that out too. And I'll do it a little bit darker. So again, this is another petal that's right in here. I'll add some more water to it and that will make the texture show up even more too. And as an artist, photographing my art is um, tricky because of the texture. Things kind of don't show up. So it's better to see it in person, but it isn't like it's all smooth and flat. So I don't like, like to do prints of it because it, it doesn't, I have done some prints, but it's a little tricky. It's just something I battle with. It's almost three dimensional. Yeah, yeah. So those are wet. Okay, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna prep. Um, like I did these areas, I'm gonna go over some of the white areas. Let's kind of show you what I do there. And that's just what's ever in my paint wells. I just start mixing it up, but I use a bigger brush. And I usually start with the white just because it's kind of neutral and light and it's not too contrasting. I've done darker colors on the white, but it, they just become very stark. And I personally want to bring it down a bit. Like this is really bright and that's not really what I want in there because I'm going to want to cover it up. 
so I'll dilute it down. And I abuse my brushes, as you can tell. I use my scrub brushes sometimes. But if you can kind of see how, because this is like the first layer, but what's fun is that um, the lines become little other areas that I can drop more paint in. So right now I just did one cut over it. It's just, you, it, but you can at least see the white lines now against the white canvas. And I'll come back and I'll look at that some more. So like I said, I'll do some other areas here. Because um, if I just, I could also just do one wash over it and just have just one color. Like this right here is just the blue. <clears throat> this is just the blue with the white lines there. But I like to kind of already have this white area with a, a coat of paint on it. And usually the titanium white works, works good with that. So then again, it, the next layer of wash will resist over it. <clears throat> I also like to garden, if you probably didn't guess. <laughs> I like to, <laughs> I'm influenced by, um, by what I see in my garden. And I um, love perennials and succulents and things like that. And they are definitely inspiration for me too. I have done some paintings that are very much similar to the artwork of the, the actual image of a succulent. And I have my art at Viewpoints Gallery and they, um, for some of the work that's there, that's in Los Altos. Mm -hmm. Just like you guys, another gallery. Thank you. <laughs> we, we, we have Karen White to a demo for us. Yeah, she's the one that told me about yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love Karen. Her energy is contagious. She's fun. I feel grateful to be there because I've learned a lot from all of the other artists. I still kind of categorize, my, categorize myself as emerging artist, although I doing it for a while, a while, but there's always things to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's marketing yourself and so forth. Um, I'm just looking at this area here. I want to get started on it. And um, I think I'm just going to go for it and do purple. It's kind of a muted lavender. Everything's muted. <laughs> So it, when you're doing areas like this, is the texture of the medium kind of determining the areas that you're painting? Uh, we can't, we can't, because it's white. Yeah. We can't see the, the texture from the medium. The texture is kind of random everywhere. I don't purposely put it in some areas. Right. It's everywhere, so it's not but so I'm much. I'm wondering when you go to yeah. paint like this, do you pay attention to the texture? I do sometimes, yeah, what color I choose for sure. Okay. And I definitely do because, um, like I said, that some reason, like the sienna's when I mix with other colors, they break down differently. So that it does make the color, the um, glaze color, mm -hmm. the texture show up more. But then again, I can, I can still go over it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Does your brush kind of feel itself bumping up against the edges of the bead? The, 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 my line work, the, the, the line, the lines. Yeah, it does. And sometimes I'll go over it a bit, but it goes, but I bump all the way up to it. I want the water to go into that area. I just, I, for the type of painting this is, like some paintings, like this one doesn't have line work in it, right? Like it's a painting. And so how you see the brush strokes and where the paint dries, dries is really cool. It's like another style, I guess, that I could do on here too. Like my mother-in-law and I've talked about things like that too. So, and I have played with it, but then I always go back. So I, but, um, but yeah, I want it to go to the edges. But if it doesn't, it's okay. Yeah. I, I think it's just distracting to me. So I want to soften it. Okay. So like, this area where I'm working with the lavender, I'm going to, um, it's um, this area here is already dry. But this is wet. I'm going to go over it really with a really watered down lavender. Okay. 
And what's this is really to me exciting. <laughs> so what I did before I had that area, mm -hmm. this area here already prepped with like um, some white glaze over the, the white lines and it dried. And then I went over the really washed thinned out um, purple and it just settles and breaks down like a resist, but leaving some of that green in the tint. So when that dries, it just becomes a really yummy, yummy area. So I don't know if you can really see. Oh, I really like it. So this is what keeps me alive. <laughs> keeps me happy. This is my happy place. I like that separation because, and it's also transparent and depth. Like when you're in a meadow and there's like all these flowers and, and things are overlapping and stuff, it just draws you in. So when this dries, hopefully it's still as exciting, but usually it is. <laughs> so again, that's with the glazing medium, especially and the pigment and the water. So that's why I kind of work all, I go back and forth everywhere because I want to start building those layers. So I'm gonna maybe do some little bit of the orange intent over here, this area. So that I'm not sure what I'll do next to it, but it relates to this flower that I was starting. So it looks like with this method, you don't need to concern yourself much with hard edges versus soft edges. I'm not real. No. Yeah. 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 Um, in this, no, it's just, it's really kind of, um, a stylized painting, I guess, in a way, because it, um, my composition is much more of a design than like an actual three-dimensional object or a subject that you see. So it's, um, so I, I think, um, that's a good question. I don't know how it's, just, just the lines and the texture of my yeah. main design principles. Yeah. Yeah, well, you you basically covered all the design elements. I've okay. Kind of gone through them in my head. You know, Thank you. Line, size, direction, texture, color, value. It's, it's all there. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Trying to get all that. And um, also choice of colors, as you could probably tell. I'm doing those teal greens and blues on the outside of my background, but I will pull them in the middle as well, just so it kind of ties in. Um, right now it's kind of all over, let's see. I'm gonna do a little bit, see if I can bring this out. This is just a tint of the blue, but I'm gonna go over these guys with it as well. And it'll, I think this is probably the, my favorite part. I should do my entire painting this way. I don't know. I love the white line work and then going over it with the wash and how you see that, like I showed you this area. It's, um, I have to do that more often because then the texture really pops out and a different way of the glazing shows up. So I'm just grabbing and really watering them down and hoping that they settle into those areas. But just a lot of water, because I don't want it strong. And I'll come back and do that. So again, this is another washed area. It's so bright on the screen, but you can see. How am I doing, Jen? How many time wise? It's still going too fast. Oh, till three? Yeah, really? Know, I'm doing good. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. It's going faster. So I'm not going to start with faster. Okay, good. Okay, good. Time to Just like I like Jim's comments and stuff, it, it generates some, like, some thoughts. So if you guys have any other questions too, it's helps as well. Um, I think because I already used a bunch of, oh gosh. And probably to me, um, and it's really bright on the screen too, but some of these green areas, I'm probably gonna go over and layer it and tone them down. But for now, to me, there's too much of a contrast visually in color 
I'd rather have it more harmonious and earthy, but I'll come back and layer over it later. So I'm going to do not this guy. Just one. Now, unlike watercolor, the paints are going to dry and the same color you put down, right? Sometimes, not always. Because I know with, usually with oil and acrylic, it stays the same, but watercolor, it's going to always be lighter. So, yeah. And it's going to, it'll be lighter for this as well, because I dilute it down. And, um, and also to, yeah, because like if you, yeah, because when it's wet, it looks a lot different. And sometimes it's a little too chalky or whatever distorted. So it's pretty much the same. I think it's just the vibrancy of it or something. But when it's really, really wet and juicy right now, I like it, but it's not going to be that many dries. So if I were to add, I guess, a bunch of gel medium to it, you know, gloss it up, it would be real glossy. And I don't want it real glossy, but it would be real pretty. So it's it's kind of things like that get lost. and I. I I wish that I could keep it really wet, like some of these areas. It still looks pretty good. And I, what I do at the end too, which I, because I have kind of more towards the end of the painting, um, when this does dry, and um, I do some more layering of the the um, fluid acrylic paint, the glazing. I also can do um, there's a term for it, but I'll do a coat of really thin coat of the gel, the soft gel gloss, and sometimes I'll do a matte. Last, not last bit of matte gel as well, a real thin coat over the entire painting. So it captures my original layer and then I can go over it again, which I probably have heard that term. So a lot of times I'll do that too. And it's almost like a pre-varnish in a sense so that I can come back and see what colors come through. But I don't do that right away because I still like this really chalky matte kind of finish. And um, so I might glaze over that. But like, unlike watercolor, it won't bring it back up, it's there. <laughs> it's permanent, so I could definitely go over it without changing it. Mm -hmm. But I'll do the, the gel gloss over that, almost like a little varnish, and it becomes another layer that I can build more color onto it. And as well. And, um, and sometimes, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. So it's either matte or gloss. And the white that you did your lines with, mm -hmm. that um, almost uh, is a texture because you're painting over it. Yes. And the paint's going to stay on it, though. It doesn't like move off of the white. It does sometimes. Okay. And that's what I was kind of showing in some places. But, but if I blot it, 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 it gives me more opportunity for more texture, to, you know, crevices for more paint to settle in. So it depends if I use, depends what paint I use over the line, the white lines. Mm -hmm. I want them to, to keep through some way. Okay. Sometimes, um, but if it's really, really dry and I go back over it and I really concentrated color, I can cover it over. But it does, because of my blotted and, and stuff, it becomes that texture again, another way of doing texture. And like I was saying is that I'm almost, I really, instead of doing these perfect, to me the perfect, whatever, it's some of these darker lines is maybe doing something that's even more tinted and having all these textured areas like this all over my canvas and so a different composition and not having these harsh lines because I just like to play and just see what happens. You know, you don't really, you can't control it too much. You can kind of plan it, but it's, um, it's I don't know, it's, it's fun to see what, what happens with that? Yeah. And I do find that the gel gloss over the molding case does help to to give the colors much more vibrancy. Sometimes they just get really flat. And even if I put some gel over it and start over again, it doesn't have the same textural quality to it. So, like, yeah, like this area has definitely got a lot of texture in it. There's this one here. Mm -hmm. So when it dries, I'm gonna come back and focus on those pockets and cracks with another color. I think I can do in the center here really quick. And I'll do the blue. 
right in here. So I'm just kind of blotting in a bit. I can blot it down some. So when it dries, and then I'll do soft edges around here, I guess, when I do this. I don't have too much of a, of a hard line, but I'm, what I'm doing is like just softening around where I dipped all that glue into the cracks in the middle. Yeah. The flower, mm -hmm. middle of the flower, and there's the blue. Because of the contrast of the green and the blue, the two different colors, the texture again is going to pop more. So like when I do finish a painting and I do like these areas that are real, I have some new texture, I'll just use my finger, I'll take some of the gel gloss and I'll just rub it in, smooth it out so there's, you don't, because you don't, I don't want to see that matte gloss on my finished painting, yeah. so I'll smooth it out, but I'll highlight some of those yummy areas. And even like this is the, um, I just kind of have like my favorite too, but this is the guy that I use to put my um, polymer medium in and um, to create my goop. So this is the medium I use. A gel meeting with the color, but um, I'll just take some of this and um, find an area they like and just kind of smooth it out with my finger. So you can see it's kind of glossy, but it also retains that green underneath. Mm -hmm. So when it dries, I can bring another color over it. So, oops, so it's got some gel on it. But again, I just kind of softened the area and I did just choose that one, air, one petal. But you know you've got 10 minutes. So. Does anyone have any questions out in the I world out there? <laughs> well, you might well Thanks for hanging with me. Thank where you. You're going, where you go to finish this from here because you're not obviously going to finish. No. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, that's maybe I'm definitely going to come back to these areas when they're dry. Like I'll have maybe two or three of these paintings in my studio. So I'll come back and I'll come back and uh, highlight the textured areas, the little cracks and crevices all over those areas and put a contrasting color or I'll use the same color and beef it up. And I may use the, um, the, um, the metallic colors as well. And I will, and this entire painting is, um, the first coat is done, I'll put a little bit of gel medium over it to retain it and do some more glazing over that. And I'll, uh, I'll do like a light varnish stain on a varnish spray over it so it's not sticky and tacky, just to keep it archival. I will paint the sides and I may frame it as well. And um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of, um, let me show you my, my other paintings, just like so I finished one, what I did, the different layers. Like this one was the one I sh showed before. And I'm hoping you can kind of see there's a lot of, you know, it's much richer compared to this one. Obviously it's darker. You see how flat this one is right now? Mm -hmm. This is one layer. This is multiple layers of the glazing of color. So the black, this black area here isn't just one coat. That's um, a couple different coats of the of a, a black or clear glaze over it, or maybe there's a green over it. Because you know how when you have those glazing, like you will see that underlying color of maybe of a brown or green, and then you go over it with a yellow or something. And it just, especially the yellow, the iron, I think you talk, this is sienna. The, um, the transparent yellow iron oxide, mm -hmm. by itself, it's really yellow and kind of crazy. But when I put it over black or any color, it just changes it so much. And um, so getting this to here, it takes a, couple, a few days, you know, to let things dry and go over it. And also like anything, you come back from a painting, you get a break and you see, okay, where do I need to bring things back to life? And where do I need to leave that, leave that alone? <laughs> or how did I get there? That's really cool. Also too, if you look here, this painting, can you see the like, brush strokes right here? And that is actually from the gel medium that I did over the molding paste. So you see kind of this harsh line, but I just took really quick dabs of gel medium over it and it gave you that resist. So the, the paint, the glaze is gonna react differently on that surface. Either it's gonna sit on it or it's gonna soak up. So I liked all that movement in my texture and you can kind of see it in that area too. And that's the gel medium, the resist. 
So I, I really like resist. Very nice. Thank you. I had to bring this one because then you can really see what I'm doing. <laughs> and it does, it does take a little while to do all that, to sure. do everything. But, um, well, if I'm done, I went, should I change the screen? So, so okay. maybe, well, we could change the screen, mm -hmm. um, but in the few minutes remaining, I don't know if you've thought about this too much, but could you kind of tell us what <clears throat> the workshop would be like? Yes, I will do that. And that's what I've been thinking about. The workshops I've done in the past, I've, um, I've had them in two days like this because we have to prep the canvas with the molding paste and let it dry. And I'll most likely have a couple, maybe this size or probably something, a couple, at least two canvases that we're gonna go back and forth on. And I'm kind of debating because it is very kind of tricky to find these detailers and these tubes and things like that. I may have like where I provided and maybe there's a little thing, I don't know. We'll talk about how that works. So I don't wanna make it difficult. And also I don't want people to invest in a lot of this for something for a workshop. So there, I will provide, I'm gonna figure out what I will provide mm -hmm. to help everybody out on that. But definitely um, I wanna, I hope I have people in here so I can actually hands-on talk to people mm -hmm. and, and help them and, and also, I'm gonna bring more options of how to use the molding paste. I think I might bring in stencils and different things. So I, I'll give you guys suggestions of how to create that texture because that's a big part of it. And getting comfortable with the line work too because um, I, it could be any imagery that people wanna do. It doesn't have to be like well, my style, but, um, but we'll focus on a lot about how that works and, and how to work out the kinks in that. So there'll be definitely two days of that in the color. We're painting later, um, but we'll finish a painting. We're going to finish at least two paintings for sure. I'm not. We're just not going to demo or practice. We're going to actually do something. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> See if uh -oh. I can. Yeah. See if I can change the view here. And. Uh, Okay, let's get the. Uh... No. That's it, isn't it? No, I want the other camera. Oh, oh it is on. It is on. It's it just we're not on. in the okay, camera. Yes, yeah. <laughs> not, in the, not in the picture here. Yes. Yeah. Picture. yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I think. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's not letting me do it. Oh, there we go. Remove pin. Oh, well. Okay, well. Okay, whatever. Anyway. It's not unmuted, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Or is it I'm unmuted, on? yes. Okay. okay. So I, I do want to thank Yvette for thank a very nice me. demo. <laughs> we learned a lot and uh, really interesting technique that you have to do yeah. your, your abstract botanicals. And so we're all looking forward to the workshop come mm -hmm. September. Come September, yes. Yeah, so it, it's going to be a, a great workshop and it'll be nice to actually finish a couple of things. Yes, it will be. It <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah. So thank you again, Yvette, and uh, wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> yes, for joining. <laughs>